The family of a Las Vegas man killed by police wants answers. Brian Williams was killed after he was pulled over for failing to have a safety light on his bicycle. New York six John Trainer looked at police records to see just how common it is to be pulled over for a light on a bike. Byron Williams died on September 5th after being pulled over by police. Las Vegas Metro officers stopping the 50 year old for not having a safety light on his bicycle. His niece wonders how something so minor could have ended in tragedy. This process has been a nightmare since the, the day that my uncle was, was killed. Um, and it was just a minor infraction. So um, with that being said, it's, it's really hard just to fathom you know, even during the fact finding review, um, talking to um, the investigators um, and just not getting, you know, clear footage, unredacted footage of what really took place. If it seems strange to you that the police would end up arresting anyone for what seems like a minor issue, a light on a bike, it's not uncommon. We found several cases. We dug through a list of inmates at the Clark County Detention Center. Of the 2,000 inmates in the detention center on just one day, 19 of them were facing charges related to bicycles, many for lights. On a phone call, the News 3 Metro says they pull over bicyclists often because of the traffic danger that bikes pose, especially in the dark of night. Attorneys for the family of Byron Williams see it differently. This is a nationwide trend where we have seen especially especially police officers targeting minority communities communities and people of color. Uh, we see stop and frisk cases or, um, you know, Terry stops, as they're called usually by police departments, very frequently. Ben Crump, famous for representing the family of George Floyd, has taken on Byron Williams' case. Byron's death ruled a homicide, but the district attorney is not filing charges against the officers involved. It is the intellectual justification of discrimination by the powers that be. They they would justify this and they would t give you technical reasons why, whether it's uh, the police force or the courts. But make no mistake about it, they're just trying to intellectualize discrimination. The Williams case is still in the early stages. Officials are warning of the hefty consequences when you make, buy, or sell fake vaccine cards. All right, Lexis Gorey digging into this one. This recent scam she shows us live, joins us live rather, to explain concerns over a possible spike in reports, Alexis. So we're starting to see it. Raiders games, music festivals, and now Nevada's higher education system are requiring proof of vaccination. And Nevada's Attorney General Aaron Ford and his office are warning Nevadans, if you make, buy, or sell fake vaccine cards, you are breaking federal laws. It's proof of vaccination or a no-go for Raiders fans at Allegiant Stadium. If it's not you, there, it's, it, it might be the person sitting next to you that, that we're keeping healthy. Announcements like these have Nevada officials and the FBI bracing for a possible spike in fraud. In this case, people cheating the system with fake vaccine cards. The state is concerned and, you know, that we've looked into various laws that it could violate. Chief Deputy Attorney General Mark Kruger says creating, buying or selling breaks both state and federal laws. Under the federal law, you can be actually fined um, for individuals up to $250,000 or for an organization up to $500,000. But it also carries with it a criminal um, component, a penalty that can, can find yourself in, in prison for up to five years. Vaccine cards carry a federal government agency seal. Organizations like the Raiders are using Clear's Health Pass for card verification. But for other businesses, Kruger says spotting a fake card is like spotting counterfeit money. It depends on the quality of duplication or forgery. If it has the CDC symbol, if it's an original symbol, if it looks like it's been altered or somehow changed, um, those, are, those are what companies need to look out for. Kruger says fake vaccine cards are already being reported to the Department of Health and Human Services and the governor's office. Certainly something that we could see a rise in arrest if people continue to um, try to use fake vaccine cards. Kruger says faking vaccine requirements is not only breaking laws, it's also putting lives at risk of contracting a deadly virus. You can be putting yourself at risk. You can put putting your family, your friends, and your coworkers at risk, and others. The ongoing CDC eviction ban is causing further strain on landlords here in the Las Vegas Valley, specifically our mom and pop landlords. 
Our Alexis Gorey got a chance to speak with them, joining us live in studio with a recent report highlighting just how hard these particular landlords have been hit financially. Now that's right now a recent report by Nevada Realtors and the Nevada State Apartment Association reveals that 56% of mom and pop landlords are not being paid by renters. And as many landlords don't qualify for forbearance, experts say their backs are up against the wall. 41% of all landlords uh, nationwide are what you'd call the mom and pop landlord. And here in the Las Vegas Valley, 56% of them are waiting on a life raft known as rental assistance to keep them above water. You depend on uh, a significant portion of the rent that they're collecting to pay their mortgage. So many of them have exhausted all savings and all options. According to a recent report, more than half of these landlords are not being paid by renters. Unfortunately, having to sell the properties in order to avoid foreclosure. Susie Vasquez with the Apartment Association says many new owners are not interested in renting to original tenants, this causing the rental market to shrink and drive rent prices up. Hopefully we'll start seeing a significant amount of rent assistance being, you know, distributed to landlords um, in order to overcome some of the cliffs that we're headed towards. The cliffs of filing for eviction. We are seeing that once we do serve that eviction notice, that tenants are coming in and paying significant, if not all, of the back rent that is paid, because hopefully, again, they're back to work and they're in a more comfortable situation. Assembly Bill 486 was passed earlier this year to pair eligible tenants with CARES housing assistance during the eviction process. But Nevada Realtors Vice President Thomas Blanchard says the bill is not even handed. The one flaw that we've seen in this whole thing is that payments were pre um, predicated on the fact that the tenant filed. They are calling on the government to roll out assistance funds faster so that landlords are not left to foot another bill. And we have property taxes, we have insurance, we have our own utility bills that we need to pay. Now, once the eviction ban is lifted, Vasquez predicts there will be an increase in eviction filings, not lockouts. Evictions right now are the only way to see if a tenant has applied for or qualified for CHAP rental assistance. Hi, everybody. I'm Reed Cowan from News 3 Las Vegas. We want to thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Remember, you can always see more of our videos by clicking on the video links. And also don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our YouTube updates. Thanks for watching.